Hey folks, it's Grimwit from NatGeva.com, and check it out, Freeman left us this key. Freeman had left the seller key for Lily. How nice of him. Yeah, it's, you know, kind of weird for people to be so nice to us all the time, so let's go ahead and grab that. Um, you just keep on doing what you're doing there, Mr. Potato Head. Hmm. There we go. Mother Superior has strictly forbidden the children from playing in the cellar. On the other hand, Lily had a task to finish. To be fair, I'm not playing. Hmm. Yeah, grab the air hammer. Let's also grab a can of food. Lily got along great with Doris, the lunch lady. That's why she knew Doris would start throwing knives if anyone messed up her pantry. So we're just going to leave that alone. We're definitely going to grab the shovel. A shovel? That's exactly what Lily needed. There we are. Let's open the stove. And there's nothing inside. The stove was black and empty. Just like the mirror that always appeared in Lily's dreams. Hmm. I'm sure that means nothing. Let's just close the stove now. Yeah. Feel that closure. Let's get the hell out of here. Hey, Edna, check it out. Look what I got. Should I use it in a flower bed or Edna? Hmm. Use it in the flower bed. Help her out. Yay! You found a shovel! Oh, Lily, you're the best! Let's not waste any time and dig up the treasure. And Edna and Lily began digging out what they thought was a treasure chest. That's quite a treasure chest. It looks like it might have belonged to some space pirates once. <laughs> so what? They were space pirates from World War II. Who cares? What's more important is that they left us their treasure. Come on, let's open it. I'm so excited. I'm going to assume this is happening in England, because I can't remember when any space pirates landed in America in World War II. A real treasure chest. It was hard to tell, but Lily was actually speechless. Mm, let's open that son of a bitch up. <laughs> That's not gonna work. Once again, more proof that the bad reputation raw violence has is completely undeserved. Here, we certainly won't get far without it. Hmm, maybe if we had some kind of bomb, we could blow it up. Come on, let's open it. I'm so excited. I know. Let's just try, well, no, no, we'll try the shovel. I mean, that's what shovels are for. It's for opening up the ground, right? So this will be like... Hmm. And what's that supposed to be? Those space pirates must have led a pretty miserable life if this was their most precious treasure. Well, at least we have a fabulous chest. And I already have an idea what we can do with it. We'll bury our own treasure. Yeah. Do you have anything on you? Hmm. Uh -uh. Some wool from embroidery class? Wow, that's perfect. Our friendship ribbon, the string that ties us both together. So to speak. Come on, put it in there. Now we just have to bury the chest again and... Lily! Where did the brat disappear to now? Lily! That's Mother Superior. What does she want now? We should check before she explodes. You have to be careful, you know? Yeah, exploding things suck. That took much too long for my liking. Is everyone finally here? Freeman is missing, Mother Superior. <laughs> Say nothing more! Your lack of discipline has reached a level that I can no longer tolerate. From now on, all games on the convent grounds are forbidden. And until further notice, there will be no more dessert, and bedtime will be moved up by an hour. And in case you're wondering, it is the bad behavior of one specific student that has led me to take these measures. In my helplessness, I even decided to call on an expert for help. 
He's a renowned psychologist who will restore discipline and order here in the convent. The examination will take place this evening. The doctor will drive the mischief out of you once and for all. And I can guarantee this much. It won't be a pleasant experience. A psychological examination? Oh, Lily, I'm sure this is all about me. I desperately need a plan. Meet me near the beds. I'll need your help. You have the rest of the day off to think about what you've done wrong. I'd better not hear that you've used the time to create more mischief and... Lily, I'm expecting you in my office. Now! I'm very disappointed in you, Lily. Can you ever do anything right? Ugh. Ugh. Not another word. Your constant excuses just make me even angrier. <sighs> and now just don't stand around like an idiot. Well, get a move on. Feed the cat. Can't you see how emaciated Lumpy has gotten again? Oh, stupid ch child! Well, I guess it's cat feeding time. Maybe he wants to eat an air hammer. Lily didn't think that Lumpy would eat it. Hmm. Well, I tried. Ooh, receipt holder. Stop dawdling. Feed the cat. Yeah, all right, sorry. The cheerful flower seemed to like Lily. At least it bent forward just a touch when Lily came close. Huh. I, I guess that does mean he likes him. Ah, there we go. There cat really food. was a can of cat food in the dumb waiter. There wasn't much for Lily to mess up this time. Yeah, this is pretty easy. Take food, use food on cat food bowl. Stop! What on earth are you doing? Bad, Lily. Very, very bad. You should really know that Lumpy doesn't eat regular cat food. Um... <sighs> but you've disappointed me for the last time. Here's the recipe for the right cat food. Bring it to Doris, the lunch lady. It contains exact instructions for preparing Lumpy's food. Doris can also find my lunch order for today on there too. Do you understand? Uh-huh. And now, get out. I have to prepare for Dr. Marcel's arrival. I'm hoping that his new method of correcting character flaws will save me this kind of trouble in the future. Aww. I wanted to eat that cat food. Lily felt miserable. Maybe Mother Superior was right, and this character correction would make everything better. The thought made Lily shudder. She had heard stories about Dr. Marcel. Dreadful stories. She should tell Edna the news. Dr. Marcel, you say? This confirms my worst suspicions. The doctor and I still have an old score to settle. I'm sure he's coming because of me. <sighs> Lily, I can't stay here any longer. I'm going to leave the convent and go into hiding for a while. There's just one catch. That guy Garrett, who's constantly lurking around, I think he's spying on us for Mother Superior. So long as he keeps poking his nose into everything, I can't move freely. Do you think you can find a way to keep him off me for a while? Uh-huh. Oh, Lily, you're such a gem. What would I do without you? I, uh, I'm not gonna say much about Garrett once we get to meet him, but pay attention to, to Edna and, and Garrett. Are those marbles? Lily didn't know what to do with all these brand new marbles. Up until then, she had always played marbles with severed dolls' heads. At least they had talked to her while she played. Huh. Marbles talk to me. I don't know what her deal is. Let's grab this. I wonder what I could do with marbles. I guess they'd make great ammunition or something. Hmm. What else is there to look at? Lily didn't have any talent. Mother Superior only allowed her to embroider crosses and lines. But Lily could barely manage even those and often received a scolding. Edna. Lily had never seen Edna so worried. Not even the night that she set fire to the vestry. What's a vestry? Is that like a... Is that like a 
piece of clothing? And are you making progress? Uh, tell me about Dr. Marceau. Uh, not so loud. Dr. Marcel's ears are everywhere. If you listen closely, you can even hear the wind blowing in his ear hairs. That guy is no joke. But you know the rumors, so watch out for him. He is evil. Evil. Evil! You say that about every doctor you see. I'm sorry that I can't help you. But I can't risk Dr. Marcel finding me. You know what they say about him. It's all true. Except the story with the orangutan. I made that one up. Wait, are you the person who's supplying the rumors about Marcel? That's kind of important for later. Uh, cool, so you've been working on your imitating animal voices number. You can tell me about it later, okay? <sighs> First, we have to get rid of Garrett. I'm sure he's spying for Mother Superior. Hmm. First, I gotta find Garrett. Oh, good. Kids. This one's shy, and that's Suka. Suka was the most popular girl at the convent school. Lily would have stopped at nothing to gain her respect. But since Suka wasn't looking anyway, Lily refrained at the last moment. I'm not sure what that even means. Possibly something about naughtiness. Lily had always thought Shy was very pretty, much prettier than herself. But cutting off a girl's hair while she was sleeping so that you could use it to make yourself a wig just wasn't right. That's why Lily returned each night to her bunk without actually doing anything. Uh, yeah, that's not creepy. Let's talk to, I don't know, Suka first. <laughs> Shibuya Power! Shibuya power! Oh... Uh, Volcano Pananoka! Shiny Rainbow Miya Sake! Shing! Shing! Ah, uh, oh, alright. Nice hairpin. Why are you gawking at my hairdo? Don't tell me you've got your eye on my original Marushu Naoki hairpin. Can you believe it, Shy? Don't believe. Just know, the warriors of light see with the power of love. Just who does she think she is? Hiroyoshi Super Frog's arch enemy Soki Nuroshi Maya Yoki Hagatsu? Down with the dark forces! Trust in the elf magic of the glitter dust! Exactly! Everyone knows that a real Shibuya girl will only part with her hairpin if it's a real emergency. And only if facing death. Yoroshi Sparkle! Mystical spirit of the wolf! Mystical spirit of the wolf! Kamanukri! Shing! And anyway, what even makes you think we'll let you have any of our personal things? You haven't launched any radical paramilitary campaigns or done anything to help destroy the state. We can't let the dark forces win! Plus, you've never helped us destroy the school. Does being warriors of the light really mean we have to destroy the school? It seems a little too hardcore to me. But Riot Girl does it too! On page 31 in volume 453, she puts one of Nagayuzu's detonators in the teacher's lounge when the dark forces kidnap Musushi Rainbow. Shibuya is cool! Miyarushi Sparkle! Hmm. Huh. Detonator, huh? Oh. Shibuya Power! Shibuya Power! Sheep girl, you're so clueless about trends. Just look at how you dress. Don't you know that Shibuya and only Shibuya is hot right now? Where's your glitter? Where are your Japanese accessories? Miyoroshi Sparkle! Miyoroshi Sparkle! Shing! Shing! Uh, huh? Oh man, you're really out of it, Lily. To, to be fair, uh, just so you guys know, uh, Otakon is not like this. Hmm, what else can I look at? That's pretty much it. And that would be Garrett. That's, uh... Uh-huh. Garrett was already there. Lily watched how her slippery fellow student disappeared into the chapel. After him! 
Is he a slippery fellow student? Oh, good. School bullies. <sighs> um, let's talk to them. Ooh, wait, balloon. The chandelier was dangling out of reach on a chain, going all the way to the tower. This always made the children want to swing from it without ever being able to. Mm, bullies or balloons. Let's, let's start with the bullies. <sighs> Mm, okay. I need to take a look at that chandelier thing. Ooh. Each mask had two tiny holes for screws. Not even Lily's fingers could fit in there. Let's see. There's a happy mask, an angry mask, and a sad mask. Let's grab that happy mask. <sighs> the mask was tightly screwed into the wall. But did that also mean that one wasn't allowed to take it? Lily was relieved. What a helpful mask. Speaking of screws, this is a chandelier thing attachment. Let's go over here first before we uh, get close. It was... Okay, it's safe to walk up here. The chandelier's chain was attached by just one screw. <sighs> Lily wasn't able to loosen the screw with her bare hands. She needed a different tool. Hmm. We'll find something eventually. Let's head to the gallery. Oh, please, oh, please. Deadly nightshade, yes. Mother Superior had forbidden Lily from eating the deadly nightshade berries. But no one had said anything about taking them. You know, they say, uh, see no evil, hear no evil, uh, speak no evil. Nobody said anything about do no evil. Those berries. Mother Superior usually made her tea over the fire of the outside fireplace. At night, Mother Superior placed her kettle over the fire here. But at this time of day, she preferred to drink her calming tea in the cafeteria. There's a hook, too. Lily had heard rumors that disobedient children were hung from this hook. Otherwise, Mother Superior used it to hang her tea kettle over the fire. There's a bracket. There seemed to be some kind of bracket up on the wall. But Lily couldn't continue without more light. Please note this outline right here. It could not possibly be for a secret passage or something of the like. That would be redonkulous. Uh... Yeah, well, no, no, we don't need to go to bother Mother Superior just yet. I got the nightshade berries, life is good. <laughs> um, how about the convent hallway? Hmm. The gargoyle seemed to worry about its companion but it also didn't lift a finger to stop it from falling. Typical. Yeah. The gargoyle had lost its balance long ago. Only a thin rope was stopping it from falling. Why didn't it just give up? The rope does not look thin. Are those firecrackers? Firecrackers. How did they ever get up there? Okay, we need to get those. I don't really see any hand symbols, so I can't... The hands of the school clock looked like irises, and the ornate mesh formed by the flower baskets looked like the blades of swords in a fantasy novel. They really made you want to pierce them. Um, weirdly poetic? To the collection. Let us go to the collection. Here's a musket. Lily had asked for a musket last Christmas. Instead, she'd been given a muskrat nibbling on gingerbread. I'm sorry, is that an old man? Another treasure chest. Today was 
Probably the happiest day in Lily's life. Right after the day she didn't have to eat rhubarb because one of her teeth had cracked. I'm grabbing that musket, man. Hey, don't touch it. That's my old Boy Scout equipment. I might be old, but I can... I can tell you stories that'll make your ears ring. Some of them are about my old Boy Scout equipment, but only certified Boy Scouts are allowed to touch it. So get your hands... hands... Oh. Okay. I love this little uh, display thing. What else can we look at? Hey, don't touch it. That's my old Boy Scout equipment. Yeah, no, we're, we're, we're not doing, going that through that again. Someone had trapped the guinea pig in a glass. The animal took it in stride. It didn't even try breaking out. Huh. Let's grab that. There were three empty pedestals on the shelf. That could mean something. Or nothing at all. Considering I can highlight it, I'm sure it means something. All right, old man. Let's, let's check you out. Oh, it wasn't the skeleton from biology class after all. It was just the old man again. From history class. Um... Oh, a visitor. What a rare, rare, rare animal. The hawk. But I don't mean the remake. I mean the original with, with extra ketchup, please. Okay, he's an old man. Uh, uh, how rude of me. I forgot to tell you, um, to tell you how it used to be. When the pyramids were built, I was the chief flogger on the north side. Yes, yes, in my life I've unified. Unified Tibet, I said. Back then I served as a carpet beater under three different Dalai Lamas. For one of them, I was even there as a rebirth assistant in the maternity ward. It was very different from the year I was an interior decorator for the Mayas. Build a mythical sliding puzzle here, hide a few artifacts in dark alcoves over there. Oh yes, I was building secret crypts when you were still in... In, in the indie band Inquisition Overload. But it flopped, unfortunately. The time wasn't right for that kind of music. Plus, our drummer had the plague. Uh, I got old. So old that all I'm good for now is as an exhibition piece for history, class. Class. It's... Kind of like watching a man's memory sort of spindle out of his head. Uh, I'll get to that in a moment. First, I wanted to tell you... Telling stories takes a lot of skill. That's why I worked for a while as an exhibition piece for history class in a convent school. I just had to tell stories about my adventures once a week. For example... How I used to excavate secret crypts with the Templars below the school chapel. Hello. Or about my time as a lighting assistant for the moon land. Go back to the chapel. What was that about the chapel? You know what? I don't have patience for you. We're moving on. <laughs> Classroom time. Classroom time. Shing! Gisp, a student. Mm. The cabinet was locked as usual. I, I want to open it. Once again, Lily's efforts were in vain. Only Mother Superior could open the cabinet. Hmm. 
the animal motifs were taboo for Lily. Mother Superior only allowed her to embroider crosses and lines. But Lily could barely manage even those and often received a scolding. Well, I can pick it up, and this is an adventure game, Kleptomania. Stop that! I need that as a template! Birgit was Mother Superior's favorite student. She had to be the happiest child in the world. Man, she's like a vampire's wet dream. Look at that neck. Um, don't even bother trying to distract me, Lily. Unlike you, I actually have a sense of duty. You don't get to be Mother Superior's favorite by just standing around like a moron all day. Like you. I work hard to get all those honors and rewards. The only thing I'm missing on my path to perfection is the Golden Girl Scout's badge on a ribbon. That's why I'm working overtime to perfect my embroidery skills. Mother Superior loves the embroidery because the pictures of animals convey important values. But you wouldn't know anything about that. You've always been terrible at embroidering, and everything else for that matter. A Girl Scout badge from a convent. Huh? Stop bothering me. If you carry on like this, I'll never get my last award. The Golden Girl Scout's badge on a ribbon. Oh, yes. Oh, that would be a shame if you didn't get that. We should help you do that somehow. I'm sure we can. Be quiet now. I just had a great idea for what I could put on the missing cafeteria banner. Damn, it's gone. Thanks a lot. Great job, Lily. If you want help, ask Mother Superior about a suitable animal role model. I'm already done with all my patterns. And remember, at this time of day, Mother Superior is always in the cafeteria drinking a soothing tea. So don't wander into her office. We're not supposed to go in there alone. And hurry up! My grades depend on it. Soothing tea? This is England. Oh, take your little boo-boos to Mother Superior. I'm not her deputy. Yet. But maybe that'll change once I've collected all my awards. <laughs> I'm already her favorite. Oh, what's this deal about embroidering? Um, in case you're wondering what I'm doing here, it's called Embroidery. Ah, I know it's not your area of specialty. Otherwise, I doubt Mother Superior would have banned you from taking it. What a shame. I know how much you've always enjoyed embroidering. Lily had to admit that Birgit was right. Her productive friend was really much more talented. But that was certainly no reason for Lily to wish an incurable disease on her. Neither a disease with an oozing rash, nor a disease that causes her to cough her lungs out. Yeah, that would be awful for Birgit. <laughs> uh, why don't you get to the point already? You seem to be lacking a few important lessons in values and standards. Haven't you learned anything at all from my multi-award winning embroidery? Each animal has an assigned character trait. Bears represent strength, and deer stand for heroic valor. There are negative role models too, of course. The porcupine, for example, is especially slow and sleepy. That's why you'll never find one on one of my banners. But maybe it's in your family's coat of arms. I have a family? Awesome! Well, I've had enough of you, Birgit. I, uh... I think I may have put it off for too long. <sighs> yeah.